The way the British weather is at the moment, this is definitely not staying on. I mean, you're probably more focused as to why I'm putting a towel on my head, which would be understandable. Basically, I'm worried anything I do might injure Gusson. You know, it might make him a little bit scared. He might jump out of his boots. So we've got to be extra, extra careful. How is Gusson getting on anyway? Good. It's looking good. Oh, for... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 46 of the Sunderland Till I Die series here on Football Manager 2021. And of course, if you are enjoying these episodes or any of the recent videos released on this channel, make sure you hit that notification bell, that like button, that subscribe button. And why not leave a cheeky comment? It all really, really helps. And as always, I massively appreciate it and ladies and gentlemen we are into january so you're going to want to be keeping up to date with these videos to see what sort of cheeky transfer business has been going on and maybe just maybe a little birdie is saying that we've uh done some uh done some business already so stay tuned but before we go over to the transfers that i've made we need to talk about the crisis that is currently going on at our club in the last episode it wasn't quite there, it wasn't quite a crisis, but my God, in this episode, it is now officially a full-blown injury crisis on top of Olasunde and Croissant, who was, of course, injured again because he's literally made a paper. We also have Mark McGuinness, Peter Miller, Dan Neal and Batista Mier, who are all struggling, whether it be with short-term injuries or just coming back from injury. It's not ideal because some of them are actually quite important especially Dan Neal weirdly enough I didn't expect to be saying he'd be important at the start of the year but he's played, played quite a few games he's had to come in a trial by fire a little bit considering how many injuries happened before he got injured so yeah I have had to go into the transfer market a little bit you can probably see some of the names or two of the names specifically that we have gone in for one of which is a Premier League legend which I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays so let's uh, let's get into them. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have the money to go out and buy actual players. We had to rely on the loan system, which I am going to be looking to get a few more loanies in as well, just to beef up the squad as much as I can. At this point, viewers, I will take anyone, literally anyone. If you know anyone from your friends, social group or the pub, anyone at your cricket team, can't even play football, I'll take them. Just give me players. Because right now, I'm worried I'm going to end up fielding just a team of under-18s towards the end of the season. Because my entire team is made of glass. And I'm not panicking at all. It, it's fine. It's fine. Because we've got two players. And they're going to win us the league. Probably. And the first guy we brought in was that direct replacement for even Grissant whenever he got himself injured. And that was Mr. Aaron Presley, the bloody Premier League legend that I was talking about. 22 years old and he's Scottish. I mean, we all know on this series, we all love a good Scottish striker. And if we have a look at Aaron Presley, for someone on loan, he's really, really good. There's not a lot wrong with this guy. Very, very well-rounded. Physically very good. Mentally decent and technically relatively good as well and hopefully he'll be able to do a job for us because what we could end up doing if croissant stops you know stubbing his toe on every wall he goes past we could potentially go to a two striker system and have aaron presley and croissant as a partnership maybe that's something in the future we can look at um but yeah we got him on loan and this is a really really good signing of course he was at aston villa i'm pretty certain i'm not too sure if this 100 percent correct so feel free to correct me in the comment section but wasn't this guy like touted to be the next superstar for Aston Villa? Or am I thinking of someone else? I feel like I'm probably thinking of someone else. I'm not 100% sure. But regardless, he may not have been a superstar for Villa. But touch wood. Have I got wood here? Don't take that context. Um, yes, my, my desk is made of wood. Hopefully, touch wood, he'll be a superstar for us. And I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully, he'll be playing his first game for us today. 
in a cold, wet Friday night in Stoke. It's not going to be Friday, it's a Saturday, but, you know, it still counts. It's still cold and wet. It's England. Not at the moment, actually. It's absolutely bloody boiling. It's basically like 45 degrees in this room at the moment. That probably won't be the last time I complain about the weather. I'm English. We complain about the weather every single day of every minute. So, yeah, you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it, I'm sure. And now the second guy that I got in was a Mr. Will Smallbone. Absolutely fantastic name. That's primarily one of the reasons why I bought him. It was just very lucky. He also happens to be a very, very good footballer. Four-star current ability. Four-and-a-half-star potential ability. 23 years old, and he's Irish. Now, we have a look at his attributes once again. Same as Aaron Presley. There's not a lot about this guy that you can't like. Physically decent, mentally decent, technically very good as well. And the other bonus is that he can play on the left and right hand side and just in behind the attacking player. So very, very versatile. And considering, as I've shown, the amount of injuries we're getting, that could become very, very useful towards the latter stages of the season. And there's a possibility that we could get Will Smallbone and Aaron Presley on a permanent deal because if I'm correct, their contracts run out. Uh, right. Uh, no, sorry. Will Smallbones doesn't, but I know Aaron Presley's does run out this year with Brentford. It does. So if they have, if he has a good season, potentially get Aaron Presley in. We'll have to wait and see. But they're the transfers. The main question on all of our lips or what we're thinking is: How have I been getting on in the league? Have I been able to cope? No, 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 no. We haven't. We haven't coped at all. We are outside of the playoff spots. Yeah, so, like, what, I mean, to be fair, what were we all expecting? I mean, to be fair, if we go to the club vision, I'm pretty sure we're predicted to get relegated or mid-table, void a relegation battle. So maybe I'm being a little bit too critical of myself and my team. We're in eighth place, predicted to get into a relegation battle. We're so far off getting relegated, it's probably not, it's probably quite safe to assume that we're not going to get relegated this season if we do i'll eat that towel that i had at the start of the uh, start of the video i'll literally eat it live on air on my twitch it's in the description so you know i'm sure everyone wants me to get relegated now won't happen it's fine there's still the slight possibility we can get ourselves promoted i mean we're nine points away from newcastle barnsley are just running away with the league so there's no point even considering them so a nine point difference isn't that much it's three games and the championship has what 46 games so there's plenty of time to recover uh, and if we do get into the playoffs we know the pain with playoffs so that'll be interesting but for now i've come to the realization i'm happy with mid-table if we can just solidify ourselves just dust ourselves down and we can go again for next year i'll be pretty pretty happy with that and that is my main aim now because i think playoffs is probably not going to happen based on off based off our current form which i'm sure we'll have a look in just a second so i'm pretty happy we're just mid-table obviously i'd love to get playoffs but the chance of it is probably not going to happen right how have we been getting on since you were last here which was of course not a great match against was it barnsley i think it was barnsley Ah, yes, I remember. It was the 4-1 drumming I got at home to Barnsley. Fan bloody tacit. Glad I remembered that. Since then, we've played how many games? Six games, five of which have been in the league. One was in the FA Cup third round. And in this six-game run, we only won one game. And the worst part is, I thought the Barnsley game would be the worst part of the season. No, no. Unfortunately, well, maybe fortunately, you missed it. That came at the hands of Brighton, where we lost 6-1. It could have been about 15. You'll see by the stats when we go into the game. It was humiliating. Absolutely bloody humiliating. But we are going to start with the Millwall game. The first game that you missed after the last episode. A 1-1 draw. Two goals in two minutes for both teams. Let's have a look. Probably one of our better performances in the runner games that you're going to see. And even then, it wasn't the best performance in the world. Two goals in quick succession. Embleton getting himself on the score sheet in the 62nd minute. And Master, Master of Goals, 
getting himself a goal in the 64th minute to equalise the game. And if you look, at, if you have a look at the team sheet, Batista Meyer up top again. Power, Agut, Roster, Dobson. I mean, for the most part, our defence has been relatively unchanged. Obviously, all of Sunday being out is not ideal, so we have had to put Bailey Wright. Our midfield and defence is okay. It's the attacking that is the biggest problem. Hopefully, with the, uh, with the addition of Presley and Smallbone, I think his name is. I forgot his name already. Hopefully, we'll be able to field a much more stronger side than what this side produced uh, if we have a look at the stats not particularly great nine shots for us seven on target four three on target for them better expected goals but not by much at all only a 0 0.20 better expected goals from ourselves i mean for the most part the game probably finished the way that most of the fans and probably both managers expected it to finish and both us probably deserve just a point we didn't really do anything to win the game. Um, so it's probably a well-deserved point on both sides. At least we got a point, right? At least we got a point through this run of injuries we're currently having. Uh, the next game was another draw where we equalised very, very late on, courtesy of George Dobson, where Hall took a lead very, very early on. Another 1-1 one -one draw. And in this game, Hall probably went away wondering how they didn't win the game. We only had one shot on target. Out of the seven that we took. And we scored that one on target. So Hull are absolutely bloody fuming, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely gutted. They got FM'd here. Well and truly. Uh, Hull took the lead initially in the 23rd minute. We equalised courtesy of George Dobson in the 70th minute. Very late on. But they had a goal ruled offside in the 78th minute. Very, very lucky for ourselves to come away with a point. Very, very undeserved. Hull were definitely the better side in this game. And we had to put Winchester. That's right, Winchester, a midfielder at left back. Because once again, injuries are annoying. Um, Embleton, Batista Mier, it's just a mess, viewers. It's just a bloody mess. And how we, came, how we came out of this game with a point, I will never understand. But our luck well and truly ran out in the next game. 6-1, away from home against Brighton. We were... We were literally destroyed. There's no two ways to put about it. We were bent over and smacked on the bum. That's what's happened. We were destroyed, viewers. We were bloody destroyed. And people that are going to could potentially love this. Do I say anything about this game? Or do I just let you all look at it? The stats. Yeah. It's... It was a disaster. I don't know where to start. 6-1, away from home against Brighton. Not great. They took a 3-0 lead before half-time. It could have been about five. They then scored a, an additional three goals in the second half to put just more misery on myself. Somehow we did manage to get a goal and ruin their clean sheet. Literally the only positive we can take out of this game, Emilton once again getting himself on the score sheet in the 57th minute and... It could have been ridiculous. It probably should have been 7 or 8-1. But this is going to sound ridiculous to, ridiculous to say. We stood firm. We were 6-1 down. We stood firm not to make it about 9 or 10. So that that and the fact that we scored are the only positive we can take out of it. They had 20 shots, 9 on target. Yeah, this was humiliating. Absolutely humiliating. And I really hope I don't have to go through this again. Because this match was a match where I just didn't want football manager because you never well, i mean are you surprised you got beat 6-1 didn't want to play football manager not entirely surprising and somehow in this game against middlesbrough after the drumming we just received from brighton we were able to dust ourselves down take a step forward and get a victory i don't know how and this was a very well needed win i feel like not only for the confidence of my team but also for the confidence of me like, after that game, I was down in the dumps, you know, pretty angry, pretty upset. And to come away with a victory against Middlesbrough, it was pretty nice. I would have liked a few extra goals for some of the other players to get confidence a little bit higher. Uh, but you can't really complain. A 2-1 victory. We took a 2-0 lead very, very early on. Within eight minutes of the game, we were 2-0 up. Uh, courtesy of Harry Pickering, our left back, and Velkovsky, our right back. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to keep a hold of the clean sheet where I think his name is Noah Wood. I feel like I've showed this guy before. Nathan Wood got himself a goal in the 69th minute 
two more thoughts. He take away our clean sheet. Croissant played in this game. I think it was either this game or the game after this where he got himself injured and he wasn't able to play. So one of the few games you've seen Croissant actually play in the past few episodes. He got a good rating, 7.5 rating. Defence was fantastic. Uh, both our fullbacks getting the goals, which really signifies how poor our attack has been. The fact that we're having to rely on our fullbacks to get the wins. But a 2-1 win, three points. Lovely jubbly. Unfortunately, it wasn't lovely jubbly in the next game where we conceded 14 goals in three games over the past two, three weeks. Uh, four nil loss away from home against West Brom. I mean, West Brom were in fifth, not brilliant. One of our playoff rivals. Not, not entirely great, is it, viewers? No, no, it's not. And in this game, we were pretty unlucky. To come away with a 4-0 loss. Don't get me wrong. We definitely deserve to lose the game. But I do not agree that we deserve to lose the game 4-0. West Brom were just very good at taking their chances. Meanwhile, we were most definitely not good at taking our chances. And that is reflected from the 4-0 scoreline. Uh, West Brom took a lead in the 21st minute. And then Chris Morton is absolutely bloody loving life. Where he got himself a hat-trick in 20 six minutes just once again compiling the misery on our boys uh croissant did get himself injured in this game as i originally thought uh so the for the final 15 minutes we had to jumble things around not that it made much of a difference because at this point we're four 0 down not really much that we're gonna do we're not gonna come back so literally meant nothing unfortunately we weren't able to at least destroy west brom's clean sheet that would have been quite nice but didn't happen we have a look at the stats this is why I think that West Brom were very lucky. 12 shots, down on target, 4 goals. Expected goals were pretty good, but they didn't deserve to win 4-0. We look at us, however, 10 shots, 3 on target, 0 0.84. And this is just the consequence of not having a very strong, uh, versatile team. This was the result of that, unfortunately. Uh, we then had a game in the FA Cup third round where luck was once again on our side. I say look, we were unlucky against West Brom. We were definitely lucky against Bristol City, who are in the championship, where we had to rely on a goal in the 92nd minute, courtesy of Linda Gooch, where they took a goal at the late stages of the first half. We took, uh, we equalised the game in the late stages of the second half. And we probably should have won this game by quite a few based off the stats. 16 shots, 7 on target, 2.02. .02 expected goals uh bristol city with the six four on target and as i said they took the lead in the 45th minute definitely against the rudder play they didn't deserve to go one nil ahead but that once again they just took their chance they ran with it and they thought they were going to have an absolute fantastic moment partying on the streets of bristol but Lyndon gooch was the party pooper in the 92nd minute equalizing taking us to a replay a little bit annoying because i don't feel like we can necessarily do replays at the moment uh, it's going to be away from home as well which could tire the team out a little bit more than i'd like uh, out of curiosity when is this replay uh, it's straight after the stoke game of which we then have derby and Reading. so that isn't ideal if we go out to bristol it's going to be a shock but in today's video, we do have that game against Stoke. Of course, with us in 8, Stoke are in 14th. I want to say we'll win the game. But based off current form, I don't necessarily think we will. And as you can see, I have been doing stuff with my team in the attempt of just changing things. We did change the tactic. We went from a Gagan press to a Tiki Taka just in the hope that we could change something, just get change the results ultimately it didn't but we're going to be sticking with the tiki taka today so we are going to do a little bit of muddling round for today's game i don't have a right back fantastic news right who can play on the left right so this is a great start so we're gonna to to play carl winchester at right back uh in the midfield oh no we can play harry pickering sorry we can play harry pickering and then we'll play volskovsky in right back and then the midfield we're gonna play we'll play small bone mm, where does he like playing is he a good defender he's got 11 tackling okay we'll play him there then and then we'll play jordan rossiter he's a little bit more defensive right uh he is and then in the attacking playmaker position we'll play embleton 
Batista Bial on the left, Gooch on the right, and Presley up top. This is Presley's debut for the club. Hopefully, he can get himself to score in ways immediately, much like what, what Gossant did uh, when he joined the club this year. Uh, we are going to take... We'll keep Gossant on the bench, actually, so maybe for the last 10 minutes, he can come on and get himself a little bit of fitness. But this is going to be the first 11 we're going into today's game against Stoke. And as always, if you want to put in the comment section... What do you think the score will be? If you get if you get it right, you'll get I don't know what you'll you'll get a cup of tea. There you go. I'll send a cup of tea through the post. It won't be this specific one, by the way. The boss mug, everyone. Look at that. It's bloody glorious. The boss mug. How much longer I'm going to be the boss at this club, the way it's going, don't actually know. But this is coming everywhere with me. Right, two debutants in the side. We want to get the team talk right. It's their first team talk under my stewardship. I want to establish expectations and show them what we're all about immediately so that when they can go back and be like, that's a really good team. Hopefully that'll happen. And maybe we'll, we'll be in for an amazing love story between Aaron Presley and Smallbone. Maybe it'll be a really, really cool good cop, bad cop routine. A famous duo. Hope that is what my hopes are lying on right now. Right, we could move into our playoff stage with a win here. Go out there and impress me. It's worked well. Lee Bird is motivated. Arguably the one person I don't want to be motivated right now. I just want to score, honestly. Please just win against Stoke. I don't want to have to say I've lost against Stoke because then that is an embarrassment. Right, boys, come on. Presley, hat trick. You can do it, mate. Have faith. Hat trick immediately. I don't really know what to expect. From this game, don't get me wrong, we are, of course, the much better side in terms of league position over Stoke. But I don't, I should have had a look at Stoke's uh, running, actually. I mean, it was, if Stoke win here, they could potentially go, what's this, 14th, I think it is? So, closing in on us, as we have dropped to 10th, and for the first 30 minutes, the game has been absolutely fantastic. Oh, here we go, viewers, here we go. Unfortunately, it's not for us. Lavia on the right-hand side, can we defend this well? This is an early... Say early, early, uh, late in the sec uh, first half opportunity. Campbell. What the? What? What have I just witnessed? What have I literally just? What is that? That is the. I mean, Burge, you literally could not be further, further from the ball. You absolutely. Oh my, what the, are you kidding me? Right, done, Lee Burge, get off me, you absolute moron. I cannot believe that's just happened. Of all the times for mistakes to happen, that is an unbelievable, I mean, Smallbone, he's, I'm not going to make the joke, Smallbone, oh my bloody God, what a ball that is from Smallbone. I mean, I wanted an immediate impact from the David Ton, and look at that is, Iniesta-esque. There, there's no way Gooch is missing that. I mean, we've pegged them back immediately. I mean, yeah. Uh, do I? May I feel like that was an emotional like substitute. I'm gonna say no. I feel. I mean, what I said to the goalkeeper went off is, yay. No, no, actually, never mind. I don't need you anymore. Right, half time victory. No. Right, one one. I mean, we'd be one nil up if Burge wasn't an absolute moron and went to spec savers. For the love of... I, that was the stupidest goal I've ever witnessed in about four episodes. Right, do I make any substitutions here? Embleton's having a poor game. I am are tempted now to put small, small bone here, getting himself on the ball a little bit more. Um, I mean, if he's pulling passes like that, I sort of want him on the ball a little bit because that was unbelievable. Right, going into the second half, there's a chance immediately. Presley hasn't really had the impact I would have liked, but small bone... Small burn. Small bone most definitely has match power. I mean, if you're coming off the bench, that is probably the thing you do not want to do immediately is lose the ball on your first pass. Uh, Campbell. It looks like this could be an opportunity for Stoke here, which is not fantastic. Gagnolis on the left-hand side. It's a good ball in. I mean... It's just full of individual... Mis What's that max power as well for... For God's sake. <laughs> Was that Max Power that's just given the ball away again? Has he tackled this into the opposition? Oh, for God's sake. I mean, talk about impactful substitutions. Mine was just the wrong substitution. 
It's just pain. What? What are you kidding me? Two individual mistakes from Burge and Max Power. Normally quite reliable players. And they decided to do that. <sighs> right, Max Power. Get <laughs> so sorry, Matt. I, mean, I don't know why I'm apologising. Dobson. Get I'm just testing which players perform well for me in this game. Right, we're not creating anything. And this is an ideal. Right, let's go. I mean, transition. What do I do? Let's go attacking because we all know attacking does stuff in Football Manager. Final 15 minutes of the game. We need... Right. I'm going to risk it. I'm literally going to risk it. We're going to go and do tactics, everyone. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just hoping it'll work. We're sent on for Batista Mier. Please, for the love of all that's holy. Right, let's go... Let's go to a diamond, viewers. Let's go to a diamond. Diamond is where love happens and ambition is made, I think. Right. We don't want to... Uh, do I want to... No. Let's go for a, let's go for a defensive midfielder here. And let's go a bit faster. Forget that. Forget that. Just, just please score. Please. Right. Diamond. We've got Presley and Croissant on. Oligamil to impact, Smallbone, Rossiter, Bortovoskovsky, get that, Gooch. Oh my god, no, he's offside. Why is offside in football? It's so annoying. Last 10 minutes. Can this tactical change do something? It is currently not doing anything. Oh no. Not another loss on, on video. That would be embarrassing. Right, Presley, become a complete forward, mate. Be completing stuff. Is. This better be a counter attack. Oakley Booth. Has he played in the Premier League? Please get that Burge. Lovely stuff. You've got hands. You went to spec savers at half time. Good lad, Burge. Right. Hughes. Presley. Presley's not that tall, I don't think. He looks tall on the match end, actually. Maybe he's about six foot seven. Oakley Booth. Guineolis. That sounds like a name you'd hear off Mass Effect. Oh. Burge, don't do something stupid. You sweaty little shit. <sighs> it is a cold, wet night in Stoke as well. I mean, it's at our place, but regardless. As if he's just sweaty that, like a FIFA-esque player. Oh, 3 1. <sighs> if we score now, Croissant, don't make it 4. Right, we have actually got the ball here, which is quite nice. Can we... Can we... Croissant, no way. I thought it was happening. I mean, Croissant, just don't injure yourself, mate. Please just don't injure yourself. Bursic, he's going to hit it, and it's going to go all over our defenders, isn't it? Oh, no. I can see what... I can literally visualise what's going to happen before it happens. Odozi, over the ball, over the top. Edwards, Doosby Hall, it's good football. I don't like it when they play good football. Are we going to tackle him? Apparently not. Football manager. I've, my, at least, at least, at least, at least I've got a fan. <laughs> Even say that. Oh my, oh, that was a lot more. That's probably destroyed the mic. I mean, I've got to do something because I'm 4 1 down to flipping Stoke, which is an embarrassment amongst itself. Don't make it five, please. Four one. I mean, it couldn't get much more embarrassing, to be fair. The only positive is that Smallbone with a Perlo esque pass. Unfortunately, we had a. a I, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, have we got any more injuries? Probably. Smallbone makes the debut. Neil's full training. Fantastic. Like, I give a shit. Uh, right. I mean. What do I change, viewers? I mean, I literally don't know what to do. I do not know what I can change here. I'm going to have to think of something because we cannot continue this run of form because right now this is shocking. More than shocking. I'm going to have to do so. I might... I'm just going to have to change tactics. I'm just going to have to rip the, rip the rule book, change the tyre sort of situation, you know, because the best managers in world football, you look at the Bielsa's, you know, the Peps, the Klops. 
Sir Alex Ferguson's, the Arsene Wenger, they revolutionised football. I'm going to revolutionise football for Sunderland somehow. I've realised that doesn't have the same impact as saying that Arsenal revolutionised football at Arsenal. Or Sir Alex Ferguson revolutionised Liverpool. Uh, I can't believe I just said that. No, at Man United. At Man United. I'm an idiot. I can't believe I've just said that. You know, that was a pilot. Sorry, sorry. I'm a Liverpool fan, so it's just as bad for me. <sighs> right, let's let's see where we're going to come back for. Let's just ignore I've just said that. Uh, right, I'm going to come back for the Leeds game because I love Leeds, probably. Third place, we're going to get demolished. Can't wait for it. At least we have three, three games in between then for me not to lose my mind and hopefully change things around. And we'll probably come back for three wins. Can't wait for it. Right. That is going to bring us to the end to the episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, take care of yourselves. Have a good morning, afternoon, or evening. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe. And I'll see you in the next episode. We're getting close to the 50 episode mark. Holy smokes. Take care. Goodbye.